One of the programs that I find quite useful is Audacity. Um, and Audacity is both a program that you can use to record as well as edit. Um, so I'm going to be showing a little bit of that. Nice thing about Audacity, it is free on Mac and Windows. Problem number one is just making the recording. And if you're playing just music that you've uh, bought and you've downloaded, you know, either from the iTunes store or from places like Beatport, then in a program like um, Serato or Rekordbox, you have a rec panel. Here's the show height rec panel. It pops it up over here. And instead of like the ability to see that red dot, you get a little padlock over there. Um, in some cases, that's just a matter of plugging in your hardware. But if you're working with music that comes from a streaming service, um, then that's still going to be locked out the moment you load in a song that's from a streaming service. And again, that's just a rights issue. And uh, these programs can't allow you to just make full recordings of uh, music that's coming from streaming service because that's basically pirating a song and copying it to your hard drive, right? You're going to need this one other program called VB Cable. VB Cable is what is known as a virtual audio cable. All it does is that it creates the illusion that you have an extra sound device plugged into your computer, but all that sound device does is route it to other pieces of software in your computer. You can download the PC version, you can download the Mac version. I've already installed the Mac version. They have a, a version that works with, I think, pretty much any Mac, and then they have the version that only works with Intel Macs. I've only tested the universal one, but it does seem to work. And you can see it, it pops up as VB cable right there in your audio interfaces. Serato has its own virtual audio cable. It does exactly the same thing. If you're using Rekordbox, what you do is before you start Rekordbox, you just select that. And Rekordbox is going to think those are your computer speakers. So now I can open up Rekordbox. You can see this little icon up here. It looks like a little computer with a little speaker. It says PC master out. When it's turned, out, when it's turned on, the sound is output through the computer built-in speakers in addition to the speakers connected to the hardware. So this is connected to my hardware. It's a karaoke version. So, um, so you can hear it, but if I turn this on, then what happens is that its sound is also supposed to come out of my computer speakers. But I've told VB Cable that that's going to be my computer speakers. So. I'm still able to hear stuff coming out of this speaker because it's connected to my hardware, but there's actually nothing coming out of my computer right now. Can't hear anything coming out of my computer. If I open up Audacity, I go to Audio Setup and say Recording Device VB Cable. I make sure it's doing a stereo recording. So does that make, make sense? VB Cable, Recording Device, Recording Channel, Stereo. Playback device can be anything. For now, it's connected to the TV set. So now if I, if I hit record, nothing is silent. So that's how you get your recording. Don't forget to hit stop at the end. Don't forget to save, of course. Uh, one thing about Audacity is that you do save project. You know, save project, save project as. It's saving it in a format that only Audacity understands. If you made any slices in your audio track, you'll preserve all of those slices, all of those volume changes, and then you can go back in and make edits later. But if you want to export and submit it to class, you have to go to up here, export as MP3. That's probably the default. Um, and it's going to ask you quality. I guess you're, I guess you're going to select insane quality. <laughs> But really, it's not that insane. It's pretty, it's pretty moderate, in my opinion. Make sure that you're saving it as a stereo. Ignore joint stereo. Ignore force export to mono. 320 kilobits. You don't have to worry about any of that. Just, just stick to insane, and you've got your file. So I'm just going to save this to my desktop. You can put in your name if you want. And I've got my recording. All right? So you can still... Um Headphones, headphones will work just fine. Yeah, yeah. Everything inside your controller functions exactly the same as your controller. You're just hacking um, the sound so it doesn't come out of your computer speakers. It goes into VB cable instead, and now you can record it using Audacity. If I have the volume down, 
you see the meters in here, they just aren't blinking, right? If I turn this up, so similarly, if I press the crossfader, you don't see anything, you bring this up. If I turn down the master volume on my controller, you notice it's still blinking. It's actually tapping the audio before the, the master level on my controller, which means I can use master to sort of like make it sound right in my room. But then I can also separately control how loud I want my recording to be. So for instance, see this is a nice healthy level. I can tweak this down or up and you're not hearing any volume changes. It's taking that same mixed audio signal and it's sending it into the speakers being controlled by the master level and also sending it into record box recording uh, panel. So you want to set this level so that one, it's not clipping, it's not tapping the edge over there, and two, a kind of mostly living in the green space with a little bit of yellow in there. There are no markings in here, so you're really just eyeballing it. Um, and it's going to be difficult uh, to say this is exactly where you want to be, so it is an estimate. You just grab that and then you just move it up and down to make sure that your green bar is completely full when, uh, when you're playing most of your music. Obviously, there's going to be some quiet parts to some of your songs and you know, that can dip below a little bit. But if I'm just playing a regular verse, that green bar should be completely full. That ensures that you're operating well above that noise floor. Um, and you're tapping into the yellow, which is where all of the, the loud transients are, your drum hits, your cymbals, the snare drums in particular in this song. If you're not hitting the red, you can be fairly certain that you're not clipping. Fairly certain, not always. You see, this is actually a measurement that's being averaged over about the last 300 milliseconds of recording, last one third of a second. I don't know if you noticed, but it's kind of lagging. It's lagging the beats a little bit. So it's always possible that there is going to be some very, very short, very, very loud sounds that the meter doesn't catch. That's actually clipping, but you don't actually see it turn red. But that's fine, because those are usually occasional. I'm not worried about the occasional clip. I'm only worried about consistent clips. So a consistent clip will sound more like... Um, I am seeing some nods, you can actually hear that there is a sort of distortion that you sometimes get when people just have their uh, volumes too loud while they're mixing. Clipping actually doesn't necessarily sound all that bad when it's being played on a small sound system like this. But when it's being played on a huge club system, it actually takes everything that's bad about that sound system and makes it even worse, even more audible. Um, and it can lead to a lot of hearing fatigue in your audience. How many of you have um, a controller where it has volume levels for each track? Okay, all right, some of you do, all right. So in that situation, you want to make sure that those are also not hitting the red, right? Those are also living with a full green bar. Pop, you know, the, the yellow is flickering and is not hitting the red because if it clips while it's in those channels, when you feed either of those channels into the center, even if you turn your, your master down or you turn your recording down, it's already been clipped. It's already been clipped internally in hardware. So the sound is already distorted. All you're doing is turning down a distorted sound. You know, kind of like this was originally this large and now I turned it down there. That's what you're doing. So this is where the trim knobs on your controllers are important. If you've got them, use them to sort of make sure that all your meters are living in that sort of like all green, no red range. Clipping can happen at any of those points. So once it happens, you can't get the sound quality back anymore. Um, now, I'm overgeneralizing a bit because there's some very high-end uh, DJ and music production hardware where they're working in things like floating point, where you could recover that quality. 
But for the gear that I've learned out, pretty much doesn't have any of that. Sometimes the clipping doesn't sound as harsh as this. This is like I'm deliberately putting this through kind of a torture test. Because in both Serato and Record Box, when any signal hits the red, it tries to put on something called a limiter. All it's doing is that it's trying to like reduce the volume so that you don't hear the clipping. But it's still changing your waveform. So if this was your original sound, it will try to turn the volume down so that this becomes more like, like this, as loud as you can get. It's just sort of like reducing the volume. Sometimes you hear it as a sort of a, a pumping. So it's like while the loud sounds are happening, all the soft sounds become really quiet. And then sometimes you hear it just as in, well, it just sounds different from the original track. Serato's limiter in particular has kind of got a bad re reputation, doesn't sound great when you're going there. Even if you look at the waveform, it doesn't look like it's clipping, but it doesn't sound great either, so you know something is wrong. So you want to be careful, you use trim to make sure that internally in your hardware nothing is clipping, and then you use master to make sure that nothing coming out of your system is clipping. Use the record level in Recordbox or in Serato to make sure that your recording isn't cli uh, clipping. You get all these three things right, then what you're trying to do is get a nice healthy signal so you don't have to worry about noise and you don't have to worry about clipping at the same time. So let's take a look at a recording that, uh, at a couple of recordings that I've done. You can see that, you know, for the most part, it lives around here, but then there are these like big spikes, right? If I turn on the clipping, you might actually see a bit of clipping, show clipping. Yeah, there's a little bit of clipping in there. So what's happening here? Why, why, why did it not clip here, but it's clipping here? See what? It was a blend. It was a blend. I had two tracks playing at the same time. Yeah. Right? So even though individually these tracks are not clipping, but when I'm mixing them, they add up together and they push it just past the point. And not too often. One, two, three, four. It's probably happening right where the kicks hit. If you hand me a recording that looks like this, yeah, sure, fine. I'm not losing sleep over this. So that's one thing that can push your mix into clipping, right? And I can tell you, when I was making this recording, my levels never hit red. Because they are happening so rarely, and they're only happening in these like individual kicks. That's what it looks like, right? The whoop, I can't actually really hear that. It's a single sample. But that's another good reason why you want to make sure that your trims or your gain knobs are set to the point where you're not completely filling up your uh, volume meters for your individual tracks. Because if you fill up your volume meters for your individual tracks, when you mix those two on top of each other and you're mixing those two at some point, you're going to push it to clipping right away. Like, you're guaranteed to clip, and that's not what you want. All right, what's happening here? Now this is a blend. I'm playing two songs at the same time. But the scratching pushed it over, not the blend. Oddly enough, the blend is fine, but because when I'm scratching, the volume jumps up. As a result of that, you know, it pushes it into clipping. Dangerously close to clipping right there, right? Echoes are again, you're taking the same song and you're sort of layering it on top of each other, copies of itself on top of, of each other. And that can push your volume past clipping as well. So in general, when you know you're going to be making a recording, there's no particular reason why you need to be as loud as possible. I understand if you're at a party, sometimes there's a lot of pressure to get louder and louder. I mean, maybe sometimes your audience is asking you to 
to do that. But when you're making a recording, there's no pressure to do that. In fact, what you're trying to do is keep your volume consistent from beginning to end, so that when if I listen to your 15-minute mix, I don't have to adjust the volume. I, I, I set it to where it sounds like for your first track, and I leave the volume there for the rest of, of the track. Um, even though I know it's going to get louder during the blends, during your transitions. So watch out for those. Watch out for your echoes. Watch out for your scratching. Watch out for your blends. Make sure that those aren't pushing your recording into clipping. And it might take a few tries to get your levels right. You know, what I would suggest is um, just do a rough draft. You know, just hit the record, uh, record what you've got. Don't worry whether your mixes are particularly clean. But that gives, that gives you a file that you can then load into something like Audacity and see where, where does it clip. 